uh, the next step would be creating a knowledge base. What knowledge will this workflow use to answer your question? And then how you do that is create a new knowledge base. There are multiple ways to do that. One could be, you can sync from a website, you can add notion, you can add text files. In my example, I'm just adding a research paper that I was recently reading, but it could be anything. And this is just a single research paper, but they can be multiple research papers. Let's say I just add this research paper here. And then from this research paper, I can create a knowledge base. Once you upload your research paper, you have lots of options to tune your knowledge base. For people who are familiar with the RAG, they might know things like chunking, the importance of selecting an embedding model, and then the overlap between chunks. There are lots of different configuration that you can set when you are creating this kind of knowledge base that you can layer on change. For example, if I go to this existing knowledge base, I can see that when I'm uploading this on the back end, what Diffie is doing, it's splitting the PDF into different chunks or different sections. And this might not be necessary for use cases where you have one or two research papers, but let's say you have millions of documents. You can't just upload millions of documents to the large language model as is. You'll have to chunk it so that at the retrieval time, you can only find the the most relevant chunks or paragraphs and give that to your language model for answering. There is not a lot of customization, which is a downside to these no code tools, but there are still a lot of things that you can do. Like what delimiter should I choose? Should it be just two next line characters? How much each chunk length should vary? It should be 500 tokens or it should be like thousand tokens, etc. And if there are any kind of text pre-processing rules, etc. And also, apart from just chunking, there are other approaches here where you can modify this, which is for those who are familiar with the concept of hybrid search. So you can use a vector search, a full text search, and a hybrid search, and you can play with those configurations as well. And once you have your knowledge base ready to go, all you need to do is come back to the workflow and you will see that there are all these settings that you set when you were creating this knowledge flow available here. And you can also change here as well. So if you want to change a new embedding model, you can do that. If you want to do vector search, full text search, you can do that. And then final piece is this LLM. You can also change the prompt that you're passing to the LLM for the answer. And you can also play around with the memory and the window size, et cetera. So there are also these kind of different configurations that you can set. So I'll just pass it some prompts and then we'll see what the results look like. And we'll also try to change some of these settings and see what the impact of these changes are on the exact, exact. Can you provide some details about faithfulness on reasoning versus non-reasoning models, like your O301 kind of model versus your vanilla GPT-40 style of models? So you can see that it's retrieving the knowledge from the research paper that we have provided. It's using the LLM to generate the answer. And then hopefully anytime soon, we'll see the answer ready. It's uh, retrieving the knowledge and you can see the query that we have passed. And then we can also see the citations, which paragraphs from the research paper it found to be the most valuable. So you can see that it, it extracted around 18 chunks. I was doing parent child style of chunking. There are lots of ways to modify the chunking style. You can see what chunks it retrieved to generate the answer. And then you can see that this is generating the answer. And if you'll read the research paper, you'll see that this answer is probably valid. Mm -hmm.